We're continuing our studies in Chapter 20 on DNA replication and repair, and in this lesson we'll be looking at the process of DNA replication. Recall that DNA replication is semi-conservative. That is to say, each of the two parent strands will serve as a template for the synthesis of two new strands, so that the sequence of nucleotides in the parent strand will determine the sequence of nucleotides in the newly synthesized strand by complementary base pairing. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is DNA polymerase. We'll look at this enzyme in the next lesson. It synthesizes the new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And so if it's reading the complementary DNA as its template, and if the DNA is anti-parallel, then as it synthesizes 5' prime to 3' prime, it's actually reading in the opposite direction, that is to say 3' prime to 5'. Prime. And that's part of our illustration at the bottom of the slide here. At the very bottom we have the unwound strand of the parent DNA. DNA polymerase will read this strand in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, in this case, in this illustration, right to left, and that will direct which nucleotide gets incorporated into the new strand. For instance, our first nucleotide in the parent strand is T, and so we've incorporated A into the new strand, the complement of T. The next nucleotide in the parent strand is G, and so we've incorporated a C. Our third nucleotide is A, and we want to incorporate a T. Well, what's the mechanism of catalysis? The 3' prime OH of the last nucleotide that was added is going to attack the phosphate, the first phosphate on the incoming nucleotide triphosphate. So the substrates are deoxynucleoside triphosphates. As it does so, it's going to inco incorporate the monophosphate with the release of inorganic pyrophosphate. So we've broken a phosphoanhydride bond in our nucleotide and to form a phosphodiester bond in our polymer. And that's a pretty even exchange, thermodynamically speaking. But again, we've released the inorganic pyrophosphate. We're going to hydrolyze that last phosphoanhydride bond, and that will give us enough energy to make this an irreversible process. DNA polymerase must have a 3' prime OH to add on to, and it does have proofreading ability, and we're going to look at these factors in turn. Let's look first at the first obstacle to DNA polymerase, the fact that it needs a 3' prime OH to build on. Of course, this is a problem because the first nucleotide isn't added to anything. So how does DNA polymerase get around this problem? Well, in this process of replication, we're going to ask a separate enzyme, an RNA polymerase, to make a short RNA primer. In our figure here at the bottom of the slide, that primer is pictured in red. Here we have the template strand in blue. Remember, we're reading left to right, 3' prime to 5'. Prime. The RNA polymerase will make a short primer and that gives us an OH that the DNA polymerase can use to therefore build on and form a newly synthesized DNA strand pictured here in purple. Now this RNA polymerase does not have proofreading ability, which means that it might incorporate a nucleotide that's not the exact complement of the DNA strand. But we're actually going to remove this primer later and replace it with a more permanent structure, the DNA itself. So it doesn't really matter if we incorporate exactly the right sequence of nucleotides because the primer will be removed later. But we've at least accomplished our goal of giving ourselves an OH on which the DNA polymerase can add on to. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction of forming the RNA primer is an RNA polymerase. It's forming a polymer of RNA. The name of the enzyme is DNA primase. Don't let that confuse you. It is an RNA polymerase. It is an RNA molecule. It's called DNA primase because it's priming DNA synthesis. The next obstacle to DNA polymerase is the fact that the DNA is anti-parallel. Now we have no problem on one of those strands. At the 3' prime end, we can simply read that from left to right, 3' prime to 5', prime, make the primer, synthesize the strand continuously, no problem. 
but the other strand begins at the five prime end. We can't read the strand five prime to three prime. We have to read it three prime to five prime. It would almost suggest that we had to start to replicate the two strands at opposite ends. But remember, our machinery is fixed, and so both strands have to move through at the same time. We could start in the center, and that's part of our figure here, but then we'd go in opposite directions and the strands would pull apart. And again, we'd have to have uh, the machinery would be going in opposite directions at the same time, and that's not possible. So the solution is that one of the strands will be synthesized continuously. That's the strand that begins, the template strand that begins at the three prime end. That's called the leading strand. It's synthesized continuously. The other strand, we're going to have to do that in segments of DNA, and that's called the lagging strand. It's synthesized discontinuously. As we do this, we'll form multiple fragments of DNA, and those are called Okazaki fragments after the individual that identified this process. In humans, the length of those fragments is about 100 to 200 nucleotides. So let's see how that process works. In our figure here on the far left, we have the two strands of DNA in blue. We have our replication fork. And on the leading strand on the far left, three prime end, RNA, the DNA primase has made our RNA primer in red. DNA polymerase, in our, as our green sphere here, is moving along and synthesizing that strand. If we follow that same strand to the next portion of our figure, we can see we're simply extending that molecule. And if we go all the way to the right, we see we've made one continuous strand, only one primer on that leading strand. On the opposite strand, at the five prime end, we can't start there. And so DNA primase is going to jump ahead a little bit to form the primer, our RNA primer in red, and DNA polymerase will add on to that. It will continue to synthesize that until it gets to the end here at the five prime end. Now we have to jump ahead again to an earlier portion of that molecule to synthesize a new primer and DNA polymerase can then continue to form that until it reaches that older Okazaki fragment. Then we have to jump ahead and make another fragment. And so you can see why this is called the lagging strand. It's made in Okazaki fragments and it takes longer to synthesize this strand because of that. So again, the leading strand, one primer, one continuous DNA molecule, the lagging strand, multiple primers, multiple fragments. There are several proteins and enzymes involved in this process of replication. Remember, we have supercoiling in the molecule, and we have to relax that tension in the molecule so that we can separate those two strands. So we need those topoisomerases. We also need an enzyme to separate the two DNA strands. Remember, this is a very stable structure. It forms spontaneously, and so if we want to separate the strands, it's going to cost us some energy, and the enzyme that does this, that does this for us is called helicase. It uses ATP hydrolysis to drive the, the process. We have a ribbon diagram of helicase in the uh, upper right. As you can see, a very circular protein or enzyme, it's going to wrap itself around the DNA and separate the double strands into single strands. As we separate the DNA and we expose the DNA to single-stranded portions, then it's subject to nuclease digestion. So in order to protect it during the process of replication, we're going to coat it with a protein. It's called single-strand binding protein. And we have a ribbon diagram of the eukaryotic single strand binding protein in the lower right of our screen here. In green and yellow is the single strand binding protein and the DNA is in purple. So we'll coat it temporarily with that single strand binding protein as it's single stranded, but as we reform it into double stranded we don't need those proteins anymore. Of course we need DNA primase to make our RNA primer. DNA polymerase is going to extend that and form our actual newly synthesized DNA strand. Finally, we're going to have to remove that RNA primer and replace it with DNA.
and finally we'll have to seal the gaps and then ultimately add the supercoiling. We're going to look at more of these processes as we go along and there's a nice animation to help you understand how this process works. You'll find that under the chapter web links for chapter 20 and we'll also review that in lecture together. One last protein that's required in this process is called the sliding clamp. This is actually wraps around the DNA molecule. It provides a platform on which we're going to attach DNA polymerase so that we can keep that machinery stationary as we move the DNA through. In our next video lesson, we'll look at the structure and mechanism of DNA polymerase and we'll see how that proofreading works.